Okay, so this is part three of the DJ Bagpuss show. Hope you guys are enjoying the episode. Please leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here and also leave your questions, comments and queries down in the comment section below and also do that on Twitter as well. The first Q&A of the DJ is going to be in part four today and that is um, something I'm really looking forward to. That will be in part four. But before that, we have our third segment of today and that will be talking about the remixing and trap saga, particularly on YouTube, which is another fan favourite genre of mine, keeping in climb with my love for music, and now specifically what genres I'm talking about, plus the YouTube stuff, and talk about the Q&A with the DJ. Hopefully you guys really enjoy this episode. I'm really happy with how the episode is going so far. So, let's talk about the YouTube saga of remixing and track. For those of you that don't know what this is, now, obviously, there are so many variety of you know artists and tracks, and they normally are original, you know, you have that original track and everything is fine with the world. But remixing has become a huge part of today's modern music age. Now, remixing is when someone else who has the rights and the copyright can take an artist's track and change it into saying, making it sound something completely different. So, for example, you've got something like Ed Sheeran's Shape of You, which is doing amazing business at the minute you say you've got Ed Sheeran's shape of you now what you might be thinking to yourself is okay so how can we make that sound different how can we make it modern and or how can we change it so it sounds something unique it's the same track but give it different characteristics to poise as a new track and that's essentially what remixing is you're putting your own mix and your own unique standpoint on a track now on YouTube there are two channels that are designed for remixing and for trap. Now, I'll talk to you about both of them in detail, but really, remixing is brilliant because it holds no bars. It can be remixed in a downbeat way, an upbeat way. It can have trap, it can have no music, it can be a vocal mix, it could be a guitar mix. It, the possibilities when you're remixing are endless, but there are two channels on YouTube that are specifically designed for that. The first one is a channel called Proximity, which if you don't know what Proximity is, I'll leave a link to their channel down in the description below. Proximity has nearly 5 million subscribers and it specialises in having loads of your favourite music, all of your favourite artists and tracks, but remixed in a different way. And their tagline is your favourite music you haven't heard yet because it's a completely new, unique way that they're making this music. And putting it out there on YouTube. Some of their finest moments, you've got like Naughty Boy, Sam Smith, La La La, brilliant remix on that. It does mashups. I remember one mashup it did of The Chainsmokers Close to Justin Bieber, uh, Cold Water, and finally it has I Hate You, I Love You by Olivia. And they mash them all up together and it actually sounds beautiful. You don't just have that, you have other mashups of Bastille's Audion Remix, which is remixed with two other tracks. It's got so many different variations and different ways that they're remixing stuff, and it's absolutely brilliant. I can't recommend it enough if you're a person that likes remixing or wants to hear music done in a, a bit of a different way. If you are a fan of you know, Ed Sheeran and you want to hear Shape of You, but you might want to hear it in a different way, go on to Proximity and they have that, and they upload daily, so they give you daily remixes every single day. And I look at it and I, there isn't really a track that I know of that is popular that is not on proximity which has been remixed and it kind of is you know remixing is such a a great way to expand you know our learning into music now i mean i've particularly doing this course i kind of know the base of how remixing is done and it's not easy it is very very difficult it's a hard game it's a very very hard game but it it just is amazing for me I love remixing, again, because I kind of like a bit of repetitive music. If you're a fan of repetitive music, remixing often has that repetitiveness that follows, that goes in and in and in and in and in. But if you're not a fan of repetitive music, then Clubland and remixing might not be something for you. But definitely check it out to look at the characteristics. And if you want to get into that game, study it, study it. Learn it inside out, know what works, knows what doesn't work, and just keep learning it that way and going and going and going. That's proximity. The second one I'm going to talk about is a remix channel which is designed to remix in one certain way. Proximity is brilliant, but it's vast. You know, it remixes in 
very different ways. It can remix in all different kinds of ways. It is designed to remix in one specific way. There is one channel on you on YouTube that I love remixing, which is designed to remix in one different way, and that is Trap. And the channel, which if you know Trap, you know this channel, Trap Nation. Now that has 12 million, I mean, if I had 12 million subscribers, oh my God, that would be absolutely incredible. But at the minute I've got 44 and still going. But, um, you know, Trap Nation has nearly 12 million people listening to their music and they remix songs that you know, top tracks, many, many artists. But the beauty of them is that they all remix in the trap sort of way. And trap music is basically using bass and, and using you know, drum and bass and having that standpoint, basically like that logo in their music. Trap music is absolutely brilliant. I love trap music. It it really reminds me of, you know, naughty music that you find at kind of late parties and it really does work. And some people absolutely hate remixing, but trap music to me has its own uniqueness because it's that one thing. You go onto Trap Nation, you're seeing it for one reason and one reason only. Trap music, essentially. Also, what's great about trap music is that, to me, it has uplifting moments. Now, I love music that has that uplifting tendency in it. So it raises the bar and then it takes the bar back down, raises it again, gives you a really nice, you know, uplifting chorus line and then wax in with the drum and bass. I love that. I think that's absolutely brilliant. But what uh, trap music does is is it gives you that, you know, it gives you that uplifting. So you think, oh, this is brilliant. I really like this. It makes me And then it hits you with a bit of drum and bass. So it's almost like it lifts you, but then it punches you, but in a very, very good way, if that makes sense. God, my analogies today. Oh, my God. But, yeah, remixing to me, I absolutely love remixing. Proximity is brilliant if you just want something chilled back, something that is broad that you want to find lots of different things and Trap Nation is that sort of thing which is very kind of down to the point you know people really love Trap Nation if you love trap music that is where to go and really the two genres are similar but different in their very own way and that is the best and worst I can say of trap music because it, a, it gives you something that is brilliant but it also can take you in a completely different direction and both of these remix genres are do that in abundance. I'm going to leave links to Proximity and Trap Nation if you want to hear what I've said. If you don't really understand my analogies and want to kind of make sense of why I'm saying these, then go and listen to a couple of tracks on Proximity and Trap Nation. I'll leave the links to them down in the description below. And also, remember, you can look at the Clubland, what we spoke to in part two. I'll leave links to Clubland's channel on YouTube and a couple of Clubland tracks as well in the description. However... That is about talking about music and YouTube done. Part three is now over and we're going to end the episode on the first ever Q&A with the DJ. That's going to be in part four. Again, I've left the links to all of the parts in the description and you can look at the playlist on my channel. This is going to be very exciting. Let's start the first ever Q&A with the DJ in part four. Let's go.